Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at another Yunzi keyboard. Lately Yunzi has been hidden out of the park, in my opinion anyway. Uh, the last few ones that I've reviewed I have found to be very well built, uh, thought out, and they sound pretty good out of the box. Uh, now this one I think has been around for a little while. I believe this might be a new revision. We'll have to check check it out when we get in there. But it's uh, the YZ75 Pro. It is a 75%, obviously without a knob, and it is a three mode keyboard. So let's go ahead without further ado and jump into it and see what we have. All right. So before we take a look at the keyboard, let's see what's inside the box. It looks like we have a pretty good user manual. We also have a set of your standard wire switch at the keycap puller, as this is a hot swappable keyboard. We also have some novelty keys that are in the box. And as we can tell from the height of these, they are SA profile. So they have a nice little scoop in the middle and they're definitely nice and tall. And it looks like we have some for practically every row and they appear to be different emoticon faces, which I got to say, I like. And it does appear to be in the, I think it's called Hammerhead. It goes by different names, but this light blue, the deep, darker blue, and the white. Always nice when manufacturers throw in some extra keycaps. It allows the end user to basically do a little bit of customization and make this, you know, mass produced keyboard be theirs individually be kind of custom to them individually and show off their uh, personality and these actually you could kind of maybe just replace the escape with the mood that you're in for the day so co-workers can just look at your keyboard and if you've got one of these unhappy face ones and they know that hey maybe today is not the day to come over and chat <laughs> We have a standard USB uh, rubberized A to C cable. We have two extra switches, and I always appreciate when extra switches are added. These are the Gateron G Pros, so absolutely no ping. Um, these are going to have a, a little bit deeper of a tone, and they are a little bit heavier than, say, your Reds. And, um, I'm particularly fond of these as far as linears go. I prefer the milky yellows, but the Gatoron G Pros, they're very nice as well. Now, another unique thing that we have with this keyboard is this customized badge with a diffuser behind it. Now, basically this, what we can do with this is to stick this on top of the diffuser and then, or actually it sticks here. They both have a um, protective layer uh, where the adhesive is below and you can connect these together take out all the keys of the navigation column and basically set this in there now you'd lose the navigation column keys but um Yunzi software from what i can recall always has the ability to remap keys so those can always be remapped to other keys if you like this aesthetic and um, we'll probably go ahead and take a look at it today and we also find that we have a dust cover included with the keyboard. I cannot state this enough. It's so important to use these covers, especially if you keep your office, if you keep your keyboard in your office, um, it's going to, it will extend the life of your keyboard uh, because dust, grime, mites, whatever might be around your office or workspace, the things that we can't see with our bare eyes, um, they're going to get underneath stuff and can start clogging stuff up. So I highly recommend these are put in there for a reason. And I really, I really recommend using these when your keyboard is not in use. Um, it's just, in my opinion, it will extend the life of your keyboard. And as we can see, a lot of keyboard manufacturers are including them lately because they know, Hey, the product lasts longer. It'll be better for us. So, it's kind of like a win-win situation, in my opinion. So here we are with the YZ75 Pro from Yunzi. Um, this is a lovely 75%. Um, it is gasket mount as it does give way, but it's not a trampoline. 
Now we can see one of the cool features about this. It has a diffuser that goes all along the perimeter of the keyboard. And I'm pretty sure we'll be able to set the colors or the effects or turn it off in software, even through key combinations. We see that we have a really nice set of double shot uh, PBT SA profile keycaps. And I believe the colorway is fishing or I've seen it by various different names, but I actually had a similar one. It's a little bit different. I think the font's a little bit different um, than this one, but it's also SA. Um, and I want to say that it's called fishing. Really nice keycaps, but SA is one of my favorite profiles. If we flip it over, we see that we have an on and off switch right here. We have a sticker uh, telling us what it is, tri-mode wireless, and we do have two flip-out feet. Looking at the back, we have a very tiny bit of recess. That's not even a millimeter. I would say it's probably half a millimeter or less of a recess, so most cables should work just fine for the USB-C port. And then we have a press and release USB dongle that actually has the brand on it. So I really, really appreciate that because especially for anyone that owns even more than a couple of devices that have 2.4 dongles or dongles that are specific to those devices, um, as soon as they pick this up, they are going to know that it goes to their Yunzi keyboard. And even if they have two, it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to take too long to figure out which device it goes to as 2.4 pretty much connects almost immediately. If nothing else, 2.4 is a wireless USB connection because that's what the computer thinks. The computer doesn't know that it is connected wirelessly. It, the, the dongle kind of, it just acts as a USB HID device and it just sends the signals to the keyboard and also receives and sends it back to the computer. But as far as the computer is concerned, it has a USB keyboard hooked up to it. So taking a look at these lovely keycaps here, taking a look underneath these lovely SA keycaps, we see that we have double shot and it's not just top double shot, but it's halfway down double shot. So we're going to have two different thicknesses in the body. So just the single part outside is going to be 1.2 millimeters in thickness. But if we grab the base, we see that that is 1.8 millimeters. Um, there's, they're so thick that they probably did that halfway double shot, uh, to in order to prevent any sort of binding or interference. But I mean, 1.8 millimeter thickness, I do not believe I've seen that thickness in any off the shelf keyboards. So that's pretty good. Uh, pretty good. And I gotta, I gotta give Young Z props for that. Now, taking a look at the stabilizers, it does look like that we have the new Pond variant stabilizers, and they are quite well attached. The tolerances are very good, and they are lubricated, but they're not overly lubricated. Very good. I appreciate that. Um, over lubricating stabilizers uh, basically allows for that dust and mites that I was talking about earlier, um, even when you're just using it, because, I mean, pressing down on the keys, Certainly, it's a little bit of air. Stuff will get caught on that extra lubrication, and eventually it will become like a mud that will either make the stabilizer keys stick and or just be extremely sluggish. So as we can see, we have a 5-pin compatible PCB with the south-facing LEDs. Let's go ahead and take out these stabilizers real quick. And thankfully, these stabilizers are very good because we do not have the ability to install screw and stabilizers. But it does look like the PCB is watermarked and says which keys are, are what. So that's always a nice thing to see. Yeah, so taking a look at the stabilizers, we can see that they are lubricated, but they're not globbed on. So that is very good and that's appreciated. Unfortunately, we do have a steel plate here, um, but with the fact that it is a, at least that feels like a gasket mount, I may be incorrect, although I almost, 
I was almost positive it did say gasket. So steel plates usually are tray mounted. Uh, and if using switches that are unlubed, which is not the case here, because thankfully these are lubed switches, we shouldn't have any ringing whatsoever. Uh, but when you're dealing with other steel plates that are tray mounted, and like I said, I this does give a little bit, but it could be I me mean, just pressing hard. No, that's that definitely gives, and it is not a harsh bottom mount, but could be one of those sandwich mounts. We'll have to see. Now we do have a nice silicone layer between the plate and the PCB, but it does not seem either. It doesn't seem that there's anything down there. There does not seem to be anything below the PCB, but we'll have to take a look at when we open it up, um, which may not be today, uh, to see if there's anything below. But we'll probably do that when we come back to mod it. There's also no PET or IXPE. Now, it doesn't sound bad at all for how it's constructed, but because we have the taller SA keycaps as well as the thickness of them, and we have the yellow switches which are going to be a little bit more muted but on the deeper side it is sounding on the deeper side but because of the steel plate it adds a bit of high pitch to it so it makes it more of a me medium pitch more like in the middle but it's i wouldn't call it quiet but it's definitely on the lower volume side it's like below five on the volume scale all right, let's plug it in and see what we have. Oh, the lights come on almost immediately. We have a really nice diffuser layer, although I would say that I wish that it was a little bit thicker as we can actually see uh, the individual LEDs. If this was a little bit thicker, the light would be more blending in and we wouldn't see as much separation. Um, also, the shape of it makes a difference in how it refracts the light. So if we had a different angle on it and we had a little bit more thickness or maybe even a different material, it would look much better in my opinion. But it's not, not bad since we have it all the way around the perimeter of the keyboard. I think that's pretty cool. And despite having a steel plate where PC plates will allow for some some diffusion of light and spreading it around. Um, we actually can see the lights quite well uh, under these keys that are opaque. So that is a nice thing. And it does not look like we have any light bleed from... Oh, there is a little bit of light bleed on the inside. Uh, there's a fix that one of our mods on our budget keys... Uh, figured out for the Aka, which I think will work for this one as well. I've been meaning to do a video on it, but I haven't gotten to it yet. But when I do, we'll see about applying it to this one as well. So, took a little bit of work, but was able to open it up. We have the plate and PCB assembly. It does seem to have gaskets on the side. Oh, wait a minute. No, those are just tabs. So... That's uh, kind of a sandwich mount. It's not really a tray mount because it's not screwed into the post. But that's what we have. We have this odd pad here too. The very stiff foam. But we can see there's the switch that we want to make sure that we don't break off when we put this back together uh, we've got the connector for the daughter board got the JST connector for the battery you can see all of the LEDs going around the perimeter of the PCB we have a couple of either test pads or just meant for something else that's usually the radio chip so that's why I'm getting that bit of like flex, but I think that we can uh, 
I definitely want to come back to it and do some mods because this is a nice, nice 75% and I think I could uh, make it just that much nicer. We do have the, the PCB and the plate is screwed into each other. And once we put it in, so there's the tiniest amount of flex. It's not much, but that's what I was getting the feeling of. So, all right, we got that through. All right, so let's go ahead and close it back up. When I come back to mod it, I think I'm actually, I might put some tape on the inside, some scotch tape, and see if that will help diffuse those, the lights just a little bit so that, uh, It'll look more like it'll blend better together. I think I can help. I mean, I don't know. I'll at least give it a shot. Anyway, this is an interesting uh, 75%. Um, there are so many 75% right now. Uh, I mean, there's so many of every, practically every imaginable um, layout. But um, the 75% definitely seem to be the dominant ones as of right now. I mean, there's always kind of 65% were really big in 2023. Now, 75% have kind of made a comeback, but they kind of, they never really left. They were always still in everybody's mind. So we have the delete key in the right position for me. Um, I like that we have those, uh, the, <laughs> the novelty keys with the faces. So that gives us, like I said, a little bit of character that you can add uh, to the keyboard and make it just that much more personalized. I do wish that it sounded a little bit better um, right out of the box, but I'm very confident I can make it this sound much better. Just the specs. Today we took a look at the Yunzi YZ75 Pro an 82 key, three mode, 75% mechanical keyboard. It has perimeter light diffusing, a sandwich tray hybrid mounted aluminum plate. It is preloaded with your choice of Gatoron G Pro switches. This one was loaded with G Pro yellows, which do all come factory lubed. It comes in several colorways that vary from double shot PBT SA keycaps, as in this one, and different profiled keycaps, depending on the color. These are 1.8 millimeter in thickness at their thickest app key. It also has a diffused backward bridge, which can be used to replace the four navigation column keys. It has a pocket for the USB dongle, and it is also a branded dongle, so easier to pair with what keyboard it goes to. The chin of this keyboard sits at 22 millimeters, while the back sits at 31 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of seven degrees. Flipping down the first set of fold-out feet, the back will be raised to 39 millimeters, changing your angle of typing to nine degrees. Flipping out the final set of fold-down feet will take the back up to 46 millimeters, changing your angle of typing to 12 degrees. The weight of this keyboard is 937 grams, and it is loaded with a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. The MSRP of this keyboard on Yunzi's website is $89.99. Links below. So, um, I mean, it is a decent 75%. Though, I've got to say that it's probably not as competitive as it could be, uh, taken into consideration all the other 75% that are available. Um, like I said, I do know that this is an older model, but it is still a relevant keyboard. Now, I've seen it on sale for much cheaper than it's listed, uh, both on the Yunzi site and on Amazon. I've seen more than half off. At times so I do know that this is a, um, a little bit older of a keyboard and it has a different type of I, I want to call it a hybrid sandwich and tray mount but because it's not really either 
though it does give a little bit of travel to the plate, which does make the typing experience softer. Um, the fact that it sounds pretty good without any sort of enhancements like that have come as of the last six to eight months, primarily what they call the hi-fi or the layer of PET plastic above the PCP with the IXPE above that, um, which does give for very uniform, quite frankly, lovely sound profile, which I think a lot of people are searching for. So I am definitely going to be coming back to this keyboard to um, apply those mods, see if I can make it flex just a little bit more. I think, well, I've got a couple of ideas anyway that I can go ahead and give a try to. Um, obviously, we're going to do our best to not break the uh, switch down at the bottom. I'm also going to see if I can get those lights to blend in a lot better so it looks more like one uniform light as opposed to individual LEDs. We'll see what we can do about that. But it's a... Um, it's a pretty good keyboard, and if you can find it on sale, um, and you want a project, because, I mean, don't get me wrong, I think some people will be fine with the way that it sounds and feels um, out of the box, and, and I mean, I don't think, I think a, there are going to be people that are going to like the sound and the feel of this keyboard out of the box, because it's not bad. It definitely is a little bit more on the... I mean, it's not silent and it's not quiet, but it's not even medium loud. So it's kind of on the low end. So I think this is, this would work in a lot of office environments. It does have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, so the the um, you're going to get a pretty good use out of wireless. Uh, but like I said trying to take all the other keyboards into consideration and the fact that it is kind of like a sandwich mount but it gives a lot of room for improvement and um which i'm looking forward to doing and i like the setup i like the keys i like the colors um the the software it appears to be i only took a look at the screenshots but it is very similar to all the yunzi uh, uh, other yunzi software that we've seen with the Yunzi keyboards, so they seem to have a lot more uniformity across their keyboards than some other manufacturers. Like I said, I love the fact that I'm going to be able to come back to it and mod it up and see how well I can make it sound, see if I can give it a little bit more of a flex um, to cushion typing even a little bit more. This was the Yunzi YZ75 Pro. Anyway, I do hope that you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, any comments, any mods, any things you'd like for me to take a look at when I come back to this keyboard, please place them down in the comments below. Even if you just want to say hi, please comment, hit like, hit subscribe. It really does go a long way. And if you didn't enjoy the video, let me know what I can do to earn your thumbs up. So for right now, fellow humans, I'm going to go ahead and bid you adieu. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keep it on.